Hi, today is February 8th and we're continuing to walk through the Bible. I'm reading the One Year Bible and I want to encourage you to read along. Use whatever kind of Bible that uh, you wish to read uh, and just jump in where we are. Don't worry about going back to the beginning and catching up. Just jump in and join us today. We're referring to Exodus chapter 28, 1 through 43. Matthew 25, 31 through 26, 13, Psalm 31, 9 through 18, Proverbs 8, 12 through 13. And yesterday I talked about the temple and how it compares. It just, it's a great model for who we are and I didn't get it quite correct. So I'm going to try again because we're studying the Old Testament tabernacle in the wilderness and the plan that God gave Moses. So I want to show you a picture and this here is the uh, the curtain that surrounds it. And this inside is the inner court. And I believe that this is an example or a model of our bodies. There's one gate and through those gates is the uh, senses. Our senses are, you know, the hearing and the touch and the taste and the feeling and the uh, hearing, seeing. And so... Those things from the outside get into our mind, which is the holy place. And that is the, the place in here that, you know, I could say so much about that, but that's not the study that we're doing today. But this is symbolic of our mind, our wills, our emotion. And this here, the, uh, our experiences bring thoughts, words, and sometimes spirits, you know, the spirit of fear, spirit of rejection, spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge. And it comes in through the senses, the words that we hear, especially things that we see and, and uh, the, the experiences that we have. And then from this place, you can only get to the Holy of Holies from the, from the holy place. You can't get it from, you can't get into the Holy of Holies from the backside or the side. You have to come in through the gate of the inner court and then the gate of the holy place and then into the most private place and the most holy place. And I believe that that is our spirit. We protect our spirit so diligently. And the experiences that we have come into our mind and we have words and emotions and thoughts, and those things will get into our spirit. And sometimes the spirit will come in. The Holy Spirit will meet with us in the holy place. And that's where we can meet with God. And God will come in the holy place and then manifest himself in our minds. And we'll, you know, um, renew our minds, renew the spirit of our minds, and then it will manifest physically. So I didn't quite get that right yesterday. I wanted to, to do it again today so that I could get it a little bit more accurate and uh, explain exactly what I meant. So in Exodus, we're talking about uh, now we are... God is telling Moses to set apart his uh, brother Aaron and his sons. They're going to be priests and they're going to be ministers to the Lord. And what really struck me about that was minister to God. Like, what does God need from us? And he's instructing Moses to set apart a family to minister to him. So there are some things that God needs from us and he's looking uh, for us to provide for him and only we are the only ones that can provide that for him we're the only ones that can come and have a relationship with him he 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 created us for relationship for intimate relationship and uh, I just thought that was pretty interesting the other thing is in verse 3 of chapter 28 he instructed the skilled craftsman whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. There's a spirit of wisdom. There are other spirits in Isaiah 11, verse 2. It talks about the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of strength. And uh, there, there are more than that. But, you know, we're talking about God saying that man has a spirit of wisdom that God gave them. And that's how they could create the, the crafts that they had. And I've seen pictures of the old, the old Testament tabernacle in the wilderness. I've seen pictures of the thing that the, the uh, garments that are described. And I can't imagine that the pictures do the beauty 
uh, the original beauty justice. I just, uh, I, I can't even imagine because I don't think that way, but I believe that it was done with great skill and great beauty. And there was um, so much symbolism in everything that God did and everything that God showed uh, Moses to, to do and to show other people to, to follow the pattern that God gave them. And there was something called the um, Aaron. It was always going to carry over his heart the objects used to determine the Lord's will for his people whenever he goes in before the Lord. So they used this thing, this physical object, to figure out what God's will was. And it was over the heart of the priest. And one of the things that was different in the Old Testament was Jesus Christ had not committed the ultimate sacrifice. He didn't, uh, he wasn't crucified. He didn't give the ultimate uh, blood sacrifice to cover all of our sins for all of eternity. So it was a, it, the Holy Spirit could just come and go, come and go. He couldn't live with us. That's why I believe that Jesus God said in Hebrew, it was for the joy set before him that Jesus went to the cross because he knew after the cross that, that the Holy Spirit was going to be able to live within us in our holy place, in our spirit, and his spirit was going to be one with our spirit. And before that, there was a separation. So there was this physical uh, tool to determine God's will. But now we have the spirit of God in our heart and we can hear his voice and we can we can see what he wants us to do in the scriptures. We have the written word and we know in our hearts and it, re, it, it uh, kind of, you know, communicates with our mind what God's will is for us. And he loves us and he's good. And if it's his will, it's a good thing. So we're going to jump over to Matthew, Matthew chapter 25. And we're still talking about the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, coming in his glory with all the angels with him. And this is in verse 31. And he's going to sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations are going to come before him. And he is going to separate uh, the, the, sheep goat, the sheep nations from the goat nations. Meaning, you know, he, and he's going to put them on one side and on the other. And he basically is going to say the sheep... Nations are the nations that followed me. The goat nations are the nations that did not follow me. And then we talk about um, I, you know, my, myself and whether or not I'm going to be a sheep or a goat, if I'm going to be righteous or evil. And he talks about the fact that how we treat other people, we're treating him. So, you know, when someone treats your children a good in a good way, they're treating you well. And I know that sometimes I've heard stories of, of, of uh, men treating the children of other men really well because they were friends and they felt like they owed something to that man. So it's really, you know, it's, I, there's so much in the scripture. I encourage you to read it for yourself. And, uh, he, and then he says in verse 45, I tell you the truth. There he is again. I tell you the truth. God will tell us the truth, capital T. And then he uh, talks about our eternal destination. If we're on the right side, we have eternal life. If we're on the wrong side, we are. there is a contrast of eternal punishment. So when he finished saying these things, then he started talking to the disciples and he started telling them, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to be crucified. He still was humanity. He's, he knew this by the Holy Spirit. He had an intimate relationship with the Father. And the Father told him what was going to happen. And he told his followers, his disciples. They must not have believed him because of their behavior afterward. They, they seemed to have had a very short memory. But um, then there was, an, uh, there was a verse 6. There was a, an account of a woman coming in to where he was, he was eating and reclining with Simon, who used to be a leper. And she had a beautiful jar of alabaster. And it was full of expensive perfume. And he, she ministered to him. And she gave to him, the Son of God, an anointing. And the people around her 
only saw the physical. He only could see it, what was in the physical and it, 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 it really surprised them, you know, like, why is she wasting this money? But he saw the spiritual. He knew she was anointing him to do what he had to do. It was a tough job. He did it with the Holy Spirit's power and with the Holy Spirit's grace, but he did it as humanity. And she was coming in and, and ministering him and anointing him. And he said, you're always going to have the poor with you. But she has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. I tell you the truth. Wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Now, if it was perfume, it changed the environment. Everybody could smell what she did. There was, an, there was a change of environment. There was a change of direction. And there was a change because this woman was willing to pour out what she had and on his on his body and anoint him for uh, for what he was going to go through psalm 31 asks again how mer have mercy on me lord for i am in distress tears blur my eyes my body and soul are withering away i'm dying from grief my years are shortened by sadness sin has drained my strength and i'm wasting away from within but there is a three-letter word that changes everything but but verse 4 i am trusting in you lord saying you are my god my future is in your hands rescue me from those who hunt me down relentlessly let your favor shine on your servant just like the light that shines in the sun that shines let your favor shine what you know the bible says let let uh his favor, his, his, his blessing shine, you know, let the light of God shine on you while well, he is light. So when you're looking to him, you're seeking for him, you're looking straight into the light and you're looking into his face and his light. And you're always going to have the light of God shining on you in your unfailing love. Rescue me. Don't let me be disgraced. O Lord, for I call out to you for help. And then Proverbs the Bible says in chapter 8 and uh, 12 to 13, all who fear the Lord will hate evil. Hate, as in, uh, uh, oh, what's what do I want to say? If you hate it, you're pushing it back. You're resisting it. You're not accepting it. You're rejecting it. Therefore, I hate pride and arrogance, corruption, and perverse speech. I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. God will tell you the truth. If you have ears to hear and, an, and a heart to understand, he'll tell you the truth. He's going to tell you the truth about yourself. He's going to tell you the truth about his relationship with you. And he's going to tell you the truth about himself. So I pray and believe that you have an absolutely blessed day. And I invite you to join us again tomorrow.